Why did Muhammad forbid his followers from questioning himself or the Quran? As you all know by now, Muhammad had a huge problem regarding truth and veracity. Neither the pagan Quraysh nor the Judaized Arabs accepted his version of Islam because whenever they questioned him about the differences between the biblical versions of events and his, he became upset, violently angry and full of ignorant replies. His rage was exactly because he could not answer the questions truthfully and simply since his version of events was entirely invented by himself as he went along, as we have demonstrated conclusively in several of our earlier chapters. It is symptomatic of all liars that they get very agitated, defensive and angry whenever they are found out. Ladies and gentlemen, freedom of opinion refers to man's total freedom of creed and thinking as well as his freedom of declaring and expressing his points of view peacefully without the use of coercion or terror. The Almighty, according to the Bible, created man free, either to obey him or not, either to believe in him or not. Moreover, God created man capable of keeping all his secrets, desires, feelings, concerns and thoughts away from anybody else in order to enjoy his independence. If man wants to be free, he will be. And if man wants to be a slave to another man or any other system of thought, he will be. What is important is that man is able to choose and through choice man can use his freedom however he wants. Every human being has the right to choose to be an unbeliever and deny his or his inner instincts and God's existence without others trying to dominate him with their human laws and seize his right of being a non-believer. To this extent, God Almighty created man with free will. The cult of Muhammad and Islam, on the other hand, is an information control one, like all cults. Information control cults usually have cute terms to describe materials that are hostile to their religion. You will find out, if you read their literature, that all these cults make statements that are basically identical, such as ungodly, blasphemy, heresy, spiritual pornography, idolatry, kufr, etc. All false belief systems react negatively when basic common sense questions are asked of them and Muhammadan Islam is no exception. Theocratic officials represent the biggest threat to any nation's future in particular and to human civilization in general. They pave the way for the establishment of a religious state that considers having a different opinion to theirs a sin deserving of death, thus giving the religious elite divine sanctification to murder any and all opposition as we had seen with the Taliban of Afghanistan and as we see with the Mullahs of Iran. Al-Ma'idah 5.101 O ye who believe, ask not questions about things which if made plain to you may cause you trouble. But if you ask about things when the Qur'an is being revealed, they will be made plain to you. Some people before you did ask such questions and on that account lost their faith. Let us together examine the verse above for meaning or logic. O ye who believe, ask not questions about things which if made plain to you may cause you trouble. Why would answering a question which if made plain would hence confuse the questioner? The Qur'an clearly states, if made plain. That means the answer is clear. If so, then why and how would this clear answer now confuses the questioner? The first part of the verse also admonishes, ask not questions. Whereas the second part of the same verse tells us, if you ask about things, when the Qur'an is being revealed, they will be made plain to you. Which contradicts the first part, by allowing questioning and the answers are made plain to you without any confusion in this case. Al-Furqan 25.4 But the misbelievers say, Not is this but a lie which he has forged and others have helped him at it. In truth, it is they who have put forward an inquiry and a falsehood. And they say, Tales of the ancients which he has caused to be written, and they are dictated before him, morning and evening. For a change, Muhammad reveals the truth in his Qur'an, 
showing how his own tribe rightly cast very serious doubts about the veracity and originality of his new cult belief system. Sahih al-Bukhari Hadith 1.92 narrated by Abu Musa The Prophet was asked about things which he did not like. But when the questioners insisted, the Prophet got angry. He then said to the people, Ask me anything you like. A man asked, Who is my father? The Prophet replied, Your father is Hudafa. Then another man got up and said, Who is my father, O Allah's Apostle? He replied, Your father is Salim, Mawla of Shaiba. So when Omar saw that the anger on the face of the Prophet, he said, O Allah's Apostle, we repent to Allah for having offended you. Sahih Bukhari 2.555 narrated by Al-Shahbi. Al-Mughira wrote to Muawiyah, I heard the Prophet saying, Allah has hated for you three things. One, vain talks that you talk too much or about others. Two, wasting of wealth by extravagance. Three, and asking too many questions. Al-Tirmidhi Hadith 593 narrated by Hassan ibn Ali. I have learned from the Prophet and preserved this in my memory. Leave those things which create doubts in your mind and adopt that which does not create any doubt in your mind. This means do not study or investigate anything else beyond the Quran and Hadith, thus mooring the followers of Muhammad forever in the time warp of 7th century Arabia. Sahih al-Bukhari Hadith 6.146 narrated by Ibn Abbas. Some people were asking Allah's Apostle questions mockingly. A man would say, Who is my father? Another man, whose she-camel had gone astray, would say, Where is my she-camel? So Allah revealed this verse in this connection. O oh, you who believe, ask not about things which, if made plain to you, may cause you trouble. Bukhari Hadith 9.400 Narrated by Ibn Mas'ud I was with the Prophet at one of the farms of Medina while he was passed by a group of Jews and some of them said to the other, Ask him, the Prophet, about the spirit. Some others said, Do not ask him, lest he should tell you what you dislike. But they went up to him and said, O oh, Abu Qasim, inform us about the spirit. The Prophet stood up for a while, waiting. I realized that he was being divinely inspired. So I kept away from him till the inspiration was over. Then the Prophet said, O oh, Muhammad, they ask you regarding the spirit, say, the spirit is knowledge is with my Lord, i.e. nobody has its knowledge except Allah. As we have demonstrated in earlier chapters, Muhammad's Allah was always waiting at Muhammad's beck and call whenever he needed a convenient and made to order revelation. Sahih al-Bukhari 8.6 narrated by al-Mughira. The Prophet said, Allah has disliked that you talk too much about others, ask too many questions in religion, or waste your property. Sahih Muslim Hadith 246 narrated by Abu Huraira. The Apostle of Allah observed, people will constantly ask you questions pertaining to knowledge till they would say, Allah created us, but who created Allah? Abu Huraira said, Allah and the Messenger told the truth. Two persons have already put me this question, and this is the third one. Bukhari Hadith 9.391 narrated by Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, Leave me as I leave you, for the people who were before you were ruined because of their questions and their differences over their prophets. So, if I forbid you to do something, then keep away from it. And if I order you to do something, then do it as much as you can. Bukhari Hadith 9.392 narrated by Sa'id ibn Waqqas. The Prophet said, The most sinful person among the Muslims is the one who asked about something which had not been prohibited, but was prohibited because of his asking. Again and again and again, the Hadiths demonstrate beyond a shadow of a doubt that Muhammad's revelations were actually his own creation as and when he needed them, but very cleverly projected into the mouth of the unsuspecting Allah to give them divine sanction. And last but not least, the meaning of the Quran by Maududi, volume 3, pages 76 to 77. The Holy Prophet himself forbade people to ask questions, so do not try to probing into such things. All false belief systems react negatively when basic common sense questions are asked of them 
And Muhammadan Islam is a prime example.